Super Rugby Aotearoa, Hurricanes and Crusaders, both sides coming off losses, interestingly enough, which is not one that you would say very often for the Crusaders. They are still in first. Four wins, one loss. Uh, last week to the Highlanders at home. Hurricanes, opposite end of the spectrum this season. Just the one win and, uh, and four losses. But given the Hurricanes beat the Highlanders... And the Crusaders lost to the Highlanders. I guess anyone can beat anyone in the season. So uh, that's maybe one of the beauty things about Super Rugby Aotearoa. But yeah, the Crusaders are still pretty strong favourites, one would imagine. But we will go through the sides quickly, the predictions, the recent history, and uh, yeah, some stats. You guys can let me know your thoughts on how this one is going to go. Uh, they did play each other in round two, and it was a pretty convincing one for the Crusaders. 33 points to 16. I need to get a new whiteboard marker. Um... That pen is clearly running out of ink. But, yeah. This time the Crusaders have to travel away. So maybe that will give the Hurricanes a bit more of a shot. I don't know what the weather's like in Wellington. The game is tomorrow, Sunday, 3.35. But it's a pretty miserable one here in Auckland. So hopefully we get some better weather. And get some few more bums on seats in that ground out in, um, in Wellington. We will... Um, it just looks wrong when it's half empty, eh? And those yellow seats really make it stand out. Anyway, the lineups, uh, the Hurricanes have kind of made a few changes. Some of them injury-enforced, some of them form-based. Uh, Numia, Coles, and Lomax is the front row. So um, Numia gets a start this week. He was on the bench. Armstrong's not in the 23. I didn't actually read if he's injured or not. Uh, Blackwell and Walker Leawere are the second row, so that means Scrafton... The, dra the grafter, I was going to say drafter. Uh, he drops down to the bench, but he is still there on the bench. So I like Walker Leo Weta. I think he's a pretty mobile lock. He did give away a kind of soft penalty last week, I think, or was it the week before, but it was nothing much in it. But yeah, as long as he keeps his head, he should be all right. Princeps, a guy who gets a lot of stick, but I think he's been in decent form. He's not a huge ball carrying six. I feel like he should be, given he's a bit of a unit, but. He doesn't quite have the same impact of like a Frizzell, but he's had a pretty decent work rate, so I like that. Uh, Savia, Julian, not Julian, Adi, Savia is captain at seven. Uh, he's never had a problem getting over the advantage line, so yeah, uh, expect more big carries from him. He's at seven, and uh, Devin Flanders comes in to start at eight. Interestingly, Fafita is on the bench at last for the Hurricanes. We haven't seen him for quite some time, so hopefully he gets some decent minutes as well. Now, the big change is at 10, because they've still got Luke Campbell at 9, but Ruben Love, like, what is he, like 19? Uh, he's getting a crack in the number 10 jersey. Remember, they had Jackson Garden Bishop, he's injured. They had Simon Hickey, he's out for the season. And uh, they've been given Auburn Ledger a crack, but they've decided, obviously, based on what they've seen, they want to see something different. So Ledger is not in the 23. Uh, Ruben Love, a teenager, gets a crack at 10. So, no pressure, just play the Crusaders. But at least, I don't know, there'd be lower expectations of him, maybe. Everyone just thinking to have a try, lad, and see how you go. Uh, Lomapi is there at 12, so at least he's an experienced hand outside him to try and keep him steady. And uh, Pete Umanga Jensen's there at 13. Husson gets a start on the left wing. Rayasi's been dropped. I'm a bit incredulous to that one. I thought Rouse had been playing really well, but apparently Jason Holland wants to see more of him, not just the ball in hand stuff, which is something we saw like the All Blacks coaches talking about Akira Iwane not that long ago, saying like he's fine when he's got ball in hand, but the off the ball stuff, he needs to up the work rate. So, And that's some of the stuff you don't see just watching the game once and just watching kind of the ball. If you try and watch a game a second time and watch the guys who are standing around, not the guys with the ball, you'll probably see more of that, but... If you can be keen enough to watch a game a second time round to watch guys not with the ball, then you are a champion because that's that's probably what you have to be paid to do to, to watch it like that. Anyway, uh, Julian Savia is on the right wing and Jordy Barrett's at fullback. Bench, Almua, Mafaleo, Fidal, Scrafton, like I mentioned, Fafida is a good one to have back. Duplessis, Karifi drops to the bench. Proctor's on the bench. Talmatene. So it's a bit of a shift up, you'd have to say. Uh, from the Canes. Obviously, Jason Holland wants to see something different from the boys. Uh, the Crusaders have made a few tweaks, but no real huge changes. Still Moody Taylor, uh, but they've brought in Oli Jaeger to start. So, um, yeah, he's he swaps places with Ala Alatoa, who drops to the bench. Scott Barrett, Sam Whitelock, still the second row. They should dominate because their line has been phenomenal. Uh, Fetu Douglas is at six. Sione Havili is at seven. And Cullen Grace is at eight. 
they don't have like a, a big name Adi Savio player there, do they? Of all the areas of the Crusaders, I know they've got very good, like Fitzy Douglas, Chavili, and Cullen Grays. I know slouches, but they don't have any All Blacks. Has Cullen Grace played for the All Blacks? He's been caught up. Hmm, I'll have to double check. Uh, Bryn Hall's at 9 Wong is at 10 so Bryn Hall swaps with um, with Drummond again that seems to be still a regular thing that they do uh, David Havili's at 12 Jack Ludi's at 13 interestingly Dallas McLeod is back on the bench so that's good news because he was in good form prior to uh, Havili switching to the midfield uh, George Bridge swaps wings he's on the left Sever Reese starts on the right and Will Jordan is still there at full back bench Tom Sanders uh, Fangonuku drops to the bench Dunche's on the bench and so on to compare these teams, there's a lot to like about the Crusaders. Their line-out operates at 96%. 96. It's a full 10% better than the Hurricanes. 96 is not quite flawless, but it's almost there. Uh, and the tackling percentage is at 88. Remember, test level is around 90. Uh, the Hurricanes is a respectable 84. And it's only a 4% difference, but when you drop to like 80, that's what I would call old-school super rugby level. So only 10% difference, but that's one tackle extra missed in every 10. Um, clean breaks, 54-35 to the Crusaders. They are a dangerous attacking team. Offloads, 50-27 to to the Crusaders. They are very good at keeping the ball alive and always seem to find a support runner. Penalties conceded, though, is the one area where you might look at the Hurricanes and go, they've got better discipline. Even though they've got guys like Khalifa who gives away maybe too many penalties, and Scrafton, uh, 54 by the Canes, 63 by the Crusaders. People do say the Crusaders can be a wee bit cynical at times. But often, if you look at a lot of top teams, there's two things in common. They can see more penalties and they kick the ball more. That just seems to be a trend and it seems to work. Uh, in terms of the predictions for this one, the Crusaders by 9 is what the bookies say. And uh, the Crusaders by three is what the rugby forecast algorithm says. Uh, their side looks pretty strong, man. Yeah. I don't think it's cynical. It's smart play to know when to give away a penalty to stop a try being scored. Good teams have been doing that for years. And the All Blacks come into that mix as well. So, anyway. You guys let me know what you reckon. When was the last time the Crusaders lost two in a row? I can't imagine. I think the Crusaders will be looking to make amends for last week where they were uncharacteristically lacking precision. Uh, the Hurricanes may be about to face the brunt of that. But the Hurricanes have made sweeping, was it sweeping changes? They've made quite a few changes. Remember, the Highlanders made quite a few changes in their game. Their expectations were low. They've got a teenager playing 10. Maybe this is a time where they can go kind of without any pressure, knowing that they're the underdogs and just have a crack. Anyway, we'll see. You guys have any thoughts? And I'll talk to you again soon. See you later.